there is so much that I could share about him. This is just the beginning of it. So rather than keep you here all day, I'll hit on the highlights. Monty is a traveling monk. Has anyone even heard of a traveling monk? We think of them in monasteries, we think of them um, go going to towns, but not going out and doing the humanitarian work so deeply that he does. He is a very special person. So unlike most monks, he has been called to spend his life traveling around the world to teach and to heal and to bring peace to people everywhere. He has been involved in numerous projects, and if you were to be delighted with a cup of tea in an afternoon, he would inevitably pull out his laptop and show you amazing pictures from around the world where he has gone into the most difficult of places and brought miracles. So he has helped restore entire villages in Sri Lanka after the tsunami and after war, earthquake relief in Haiti and Nepal and cyclone relief in Bangladesh. He has recently, in the last couple of years, built multiple schools, multiple homes, rescued hundreds of people from homelessness. He helps to restore eyesight by bringing glasses to villages, medical supplies and wheelchairs. I remember one set of videos and pictures that he showed me in a village where they never had wheelchairs and people, multiple people, literally crawled to be in the village when he was there to have the first wheelchair that they could ever be mobile other than on their own. Very, very deep work that he does. And so the Dalai Lama says of him, Bhante Vimala's heart, his heartfelt concern for the suffering and the simple remedies he draws from the Buddha's teachings will be a source of strength for everyone confused by the pressures of modern life. And that is all of us. He has a message for everyone, a deep heart, and he is going to lead us in meditation, and he is going to share his wisdom on compassion and then be with us this afternoon. It is such a delight to share this person who has changed my life with all of you. Please welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for the music, the beautiful music. Hello, I'm so, sorry, Sarah and Elizabeth, thank you for inviting me. Um, I have known her for a while and I uh, uh, appreciate her efforts to bring us together for this morning. So let's close our eyes. Pay attention to your breathing and feel the breath. Notice the sensation of the movement of your breath. Follow the breath to the center of your chest. Notice the rhythmic rising and falling of your chest. Each time you breathe in, chest rise. Taking in a deeper breath as you slowly breathe out, visualize, feel, you simply release or let go of any stress, any tension, any pressure from your lungs, from your heart, from your chest. Empty the lungs. Breathe out fully. Take a couple of more breaths and do the same. Allow each time chest muscles to relax. Pay attention to your shoulders and both arms. Breathing in, feel. You can gently lift your shoulders as you breathe out. 
slowly drop. Allow the shoulders to relax deeply. Let them relax. Pay attention to your hands. Feel the fingers and palms. As you breathe out, breathe out, let them become light. Let them relax. Relax hands with each breath as you breathe out. Turn your attention to your face. Eyelids are gently closed. Each time you breathe out, visualize your eyes relax, your facial muscles relax. Let them relax with each and every breath. As you breathe in, follow the breath to the center of your chest. Feel the whole body. As you mindfully breathe out, allow the body to relax. Think to yourself, I'm relaxed. Oh, my body is relaxed. Breathing in, feeling the breath, my mind is calm, visualize, feel that you allow the mind to slow down with your breath as you tune in and feel this life force that flows through you. Breathing in, mind is calm. Let the mind slow down. Breathing out, the body is relaxed. Let your deep body become lighter. Now breathing in mindfully and peacefully, being connected to the beautiful life force flowing through. I would like you to go through this with me. I have written it after a, a meditation. I call this inviting silence. I become the detached observer and watch my thoughts with lives of their own flash and flutter rise and fall, come and go. I smile and I slow my thoughts to rest. Kindly and patiently, I calm them all rest. Motionless, effortless, all quiet. A great and peaceful ocean, home to mysteries and treasure, at voiceless rest beneath the sea. 
with silent contemplation and inner awareness. The mind clears its way. I enter <coughs> the vastness and drift beneath its gentle surface in slow strong currents of deeper self currents of love currents of joy currents of serenity Currents of bliss. I'm suddenly free, free from a noisy mind, free from a warring brain, free to embrace the beauty of all life, free. To connect with my pure spirit. To know only peace and kindness, love and joy. A moment of eternal freedom. Liberated from a confused mind, the deepest part of me emerges from within and with the small and subtle gentle touches silence speaks to me silence speaks to me. Silence speaks to me. Now keep your attention on your breath. Experience fully each breath as you breathe in and out. Remind yourself you have entered into sacred space. You are sitting peacefully. You are aware of your body. And you are here. To allow yourself to be connected peacefully to yourself. You are here to experience peace with yourself. You are here. to have a few spiritually nurturing moments. So breathing in peacefully and mindfully. Remind yourself to be open. With each breath Repeat in your mind, I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and peace.
Breathing in. Follow the breath to the center of your chest. Allow the awareness rise from within and visualize you simply open in this moment to receive love and peace to be nurtured by love and peace. Keep repeating with each breath as you breathe in I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and peace. Breathing in peacefully and mindfully, being deeply aware of the energy in your heart. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and healing, accepting love and healing, accepting love and healing. Feel connected to the energy of your body, the life force that moves through your body, moves through your heart. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and joy. Your body is relaxed, your mind is fully focused on your breath. You experience the energy of each breath. Reaching your heart, you simply repeat, I open my heart to the universe, accepting love <coughs> and joy. And I want you to smile as you feel this energy as you repeat it, a joy, an experience in this moment, and smile or let your facial muscles change with that smile, and feel that with each breath you allow the energy of your heart to release this joy from within. And keep smiling with each breath. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and joy. Now, while breathing in mindfully and peacefully, pay attention to your hands. Your hands are relaxed. Mindfully put them together and bring them up to the chest. And if you want, let the side of your thumbs touch the center of your chest. As you breathe in, allow the chest to relax. And consider this moment as a moment where you peacefully, respectfully, connected to yourself, you appreciate and you are deeply grateful for your life. And please repeat after me. I open my heart to the universe. I open my heart to the universe. Accepting love and peace. Accepting love and peace. I open my heart to the universe. I open my heart to the universe.
accepting love and healing. Accepting love and healing. I open my heart to the universe. Accepting love and joy. Accepting love and joy. Now greet yourself with your biggest smile. Feel the connection with your body. Now that you will treat yourself kindly and gently and respectfully. As you appreciate the blessings in your life. When you are ready, you can open the eyes. So it's nice to be here today and again I appreciate the effort of Reverend Elizabeth to bring us all together. Um, we were talking about a subject, a topic for this morning and decided to talk about compassion <coughs> and how to bring compassion into our daily life because compassion is an important spiritual virtue when we integrate it into our daily life we not only mature spiritually it gives us so much strength to face the challenges and find harmony. So, what do you think about compassion? Do you experience compassion often? How do you define compassion? Once I was in our temple in Kenya, in Nairobi. A lady comes to visit me and she had one question. She came and sat down and she asked me, Ante, why does compassion hurt so much? This was her question. And I asked her to explain. She said that she was working in an AIDS orphanage where there were so many babies who were suffering so much and <coughs> dying. She's so disturbed and she was sad and upset, confused. She says, I feel so much compassion for these children. It hurt me so much. And then she continued her story. She says, I lived in Boston. I, she was a very successful woman. She was having signs of depression. Her therapist told her, if you do act of compassion, you can heal. So she contacted this environmental organization and she was sent to Africa. She says, Dante, I'm worse than when I came. And I really understood her feelings her emotions, her state of mind and 
I told her, the way I understand it, compassion can never hurt us. Compassion heals. Compassion does not bring discomfort. Or compassion can cause depression. And she asked me to explain. And I said, when we see the suffering of others, It is natural for us to emotionally react. So, compassion is not a negative emotional reaction. We don't call it a compassion. Compassion. Compassion is a positive response that comes from the awareness of the suffering of others that carries healing energy. When you are full of compassion, you radiate that energy. It brings comfort to the person who is in front of you. So, to allow the compassion to flow through you, you need to prevent yourself from getting disturbed. When you are emotionally disturbed, when you are negatively charged, when you are so unhappy and miserable or sad, it is more like you are lost in the anxiety of negative emotion. You are disconnected from the energy of your heart, which means the compassion doesn't exist that moment. And it's very easy for people to push with the anger to help some people. And often, when you see the suffering of others, if you get disturbed, and that disturbed negative emotion is the motivation for you to act, it is so easy for you to get disturbed yourself, or depressed, or burned out eventually. You know, often as a Buddhist monk, I'm called to bless people, and especially at the worst moment of their lives. Sometimes had an accident and people have been hurt and go to a hospital or terminal illness. Uh, 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 people are dying. When I go to see somebody who is in deep pain, the biggest challenge is for me to stay calm. How can I stay calm and pay attention and experience the pain that person is going through? Because when I am lost in negative emotion, uh, sad is an sadness is a negative emotion. We don't say it's bad to be feel sad, but actual reality is when you are deeply sad, when you are angry, when you are uh, unhappy, you're lost in this negative energy. So it is not possible for me to bless somebody. To bless is to radiate healing energy. No matter how serious the pain or the suffering of the other person is, if I allow that to disturb me, I cannot bless that person. In order to bless that person, I need to step back, calm down, come to a place of peace and feel the warmth of compassion in me. Allow that to flow through me, even if I hold the hand just for a few minutes, say just a few words, and that brings comfort to this person. 
because compassion first the moment the compassion compassion flows through you you experience comfort because it's a warmth in your heart what we call spiritual virtue and moment you are releasing it even with that those thoughts intentions in your mind if you hold the hand this person receive that healing energy and feel comfort and bring this situation to um, a daily life for example and if you look at your challenges now not only when you see the other people suffering you need compassion and you need to train yourself to come to a place of peace and feel calm slow down your mind if you are disturbed emotionally and then bring that positive awareness so the same thing when you have conflict with people often people mistreat us somebody can speak a bad word somebody can insult you when you have a bad relationship for example it's very important to see how compassion could be a tool for you and powerful effective tool to work with a difficult person when a person speak a bad word or insult you or disturb you in that moment try this step back is to reacting feeling disturbed by these things look at yourself first because the moment somebody insults us instantly instantly we get lost in a negative reaction and we feel the pain in us we feel the discomfort in us that's why they said you hurt me you cause me pain you would say but the truth is nobody can hurt you your pain is not caused by that person nobody can cause pain in you it's impossible so somebody speak a bad word to you and you feel disturbed the amount of negativity that flows to your reaction is what shapes the intensity of your pain that you experience in you so the brain is a result of your reaction not the word so this energy of the verbal energy cannot penetrate us our reaction to the other people's words so the then what we try to do then we to bring compassion first you need to calm your mind slow down step back somebody is speaking to you an insightful word and you look at that person you step back first pay attention to yourself and with if you can stay calm and come to a place of compassion this word insightful word <coughs> is not about you it's not there is no reason for you to feel so anxious so angry so bitter about it this is where the suffering the pain is being produced inside you so if you just step back and pay attention to the other person with the moment you feel compassion or connect with compassion you are more focused on the person that who is abusing you it's so important that the moment you focus your attention on the person who is abusing you you begin to see why that person is abusing where those words are coming from because nobody can hurt you verbally or physically if they don't hurt themselves the power to hurt comes from power of the pain in you when you think about the smallest simplest abusive word that you speak 
is coming from a place of pain in you. If there is no pain, there is nothing. You cannot speak bad words to others. So the compassion allows us not to personalize the word, take it personally and prepare to revenge or attack back. And the compassion motivates you to pay attention to the person who is speaking abusive words and you immediately see this person's pain, discomfort, unhappiness and how it is released through these words. When you see that, only you, you, you wish that this person will be free from that suffering. You, you, because to be abusive is to be in pain. So you know when you see that person, that, that, that compassion, you feel compassion, which means you suddenly see that, that I don't want you to suffer like this. I see your pain. But also the compassion has wisdom. So because of that, you will be able to step back and simply be aware of the options that are available for you. Step back, speak nicely, listen carefully, comfort this person. What is interesting, that if your compassion is genuine, if your thoughts are pure, no aggression can be held too long. People who are aggressive towards us, because any aggressive, aggressive person, a bad person, a mean-hearted person, has the same human heart that you have, and able to feel love, feel compassion, you know, and feel that energy. So, that is why you should ask yourself in your daily life, how are you going to prepare yourself to be more compassionate when other people mistreat you? Some people say, oh, you're compassionate, these people are so, they are so abusive, this person, you're naive. I said, no, not naive. Because compassion has wisdom. I'm not revengeful. I'm not matching your negativity with my negativity. Not because I'm naive. I think I choose differently. Because I'm more aware that disturbed person, the perception of a disturbed person, emotionally disturbed person is narrow. When you get emotionally disturbed as you react to the other people's person, your perception also gets narrowed. That's why you get locked in with negativity. That's why you intensify the negativity. That's why you see a negative intensity as the solution to address the negativity of others. Right? So it is important then to see a compassion if you understand is a very effective, powerful tool, but you need to come to a place of peace. And each time, each time somebody speak a bad word to you, somebody is hurting, somebody bring you discomfort, some action, some event, look at that person, pay attention to that person, be compassionate towards that person, know that nobody even have, can think a negative thought about you, if that person is in a place of peace. Efforts to hurt others come from the pain that you hold within you. So, but compassion brings it to light and requires you to change your attitude. Change your attitude, adjust your attitude, refresh your attitude with positive awareness and then you will be able to heal the people who hurt you. You will be able to nurture the people who need that spiritual nurture. And you become part of a solution and a peacemaker. And I believe that no matter who you are, how hard the condition, the difficulties, if you are in a positive state, 
when you are motivated by the energy of your heart, you become a peacemaker. And <coughs> other people lose their intensity and the strength of their negativity, become weaker in the presence of you, where you hold that heart energy. And the genuine compassion is your strength. The strength of anger become weaker and weaker. And not only that, it, the strength of your compassion can motivate somebody to look at that person's bad behavior or negativity. And uh, uh, negative character and so on. So I hope this morning, I think it is time, uh, you will uh, remind yourself the importance of compassion. Ask yourself, am I compassionate? And ask yourself, what are you willing to do to bring more compassion into your daily life? Think of situations and circumstances where the compassion or compassionate thoughts, compassionate attitude, compassionate actions can be part to solutions, healing and peace. Thank you. And uh, so, Karen, it is uh, sorry, excellent. It's